Hello dear students. In this lecture we are going to discuss about field oriented control or vector control of induction motor drives. The vector control concept was proposed by Hasse in 1969 and Blanche in 1972 and this produces a decoupled control of the torque and flux in the induction machine. These are the three main important points which form the basis of vector control. Here the machine current and voltage are analyzed in the space vector domain. The, that is the three phase, phase voltages and currents are transformed into the two phase space vector domains and that is based and using these space vectors we are going to control the performance of the induction motor. The transformation of a three phase speed and time dependent system into a two coordinate time invariant system is done here and there is effective pulse width modulation pattern generation using the space vector modulation concept. So in this vector control the control of the AC machine acquires every advantage of a DC machine control and frees itself from the mechanical commutation drawbacks which are which is the main drawback in a DC machine drive. If you go through the DC drive analogy you can see that uh, neglecting the armature reaction and field saturation effects the torque developed in a DC machine is given by this expression. What is IF? IF is the field current and IA is the armature current or you generally write that E is torque is directly proportional to phi IA isn't it? Now IA is the armature current flux is controlled by the field current. So the field flux is perpendicular to armature flux in a DC machine and these are flux space vectors and they are stationary in space and they are orthogonal or decoupled in nature. What do you mean by decoupled in nature? If you control this IA to control the torque value and it, this field which is generated, the flux will not be affected by this change in IA. Or in other words, if you change the flux which this motor, uh, the flux of this particular machine, IA will not be affected. IA will depend upon the load. So you can control IA as well as IF. IA can be controlled by varying the voltage that is applied to this machine. So if you control IA and IF, you can ensure that there is independent control of IF and IA in a DC machine and that is the main advantage of a DC drive. So this is applied to an induction machine. Why we have difficulty in applying this to an induction machine? You know that for an induction machine a three phase supply is applied to the stator of the machine to produce a rotating magnetic field which means the flux is generated by this three phase supply. So the stator current is the only uh, component which we can control here. There is no flux producing current which we can directly measure. So the stator current we are going to divide it into two components one as the flux producing component of stator current and the other as the torque producing component of the stator current just like a DC machine in an induction machine and for that we are going to use this concept of vector control. That is the idea behind bringing this DC drive property into a into an induction machine. Now the speed control methods which we have already discussed in our third module when we discussed voltage V by F control and all. These are based on the equivalent model of the induction motor in steady state. And uh, we saw that these methods, the volt, volt hertz method for example works very well for slowly changing loads such as fans or pumps. 
but it is less effective when fast dynamic response is required so in particular the you can see high current transients can occur when there is a rapid change in the speed of speed of the machine or torque requirement of the machine and in scalar control you are varying the magnitude of this voltage and frequency so this high currents which occur during transient periods are a result of the high slip factor that occurs during the change so fast dynamic response can be realized without these high currents if both these torque and flux are controlled independently in a closed loop manner this purpose is accomplished using vector control techniques and this vector control is also commonly referred to as field oriented control of the induction motor so that that is what i said the traditional control methods like volts hertz control method control the frequency and amplitude of the motor drive voltage in contrast to this the vector control methods control the frequency amplitude as well as phase of the motor drive voltage ultimately after this control what are we applying we are applying a particular modulated voltage to the machine induction machine so this the references to this control voltage source inverter is produced after vector control algorithm so for that some feedbacks are taken from this induction machine and the control system will control the references which are given to the uh, voltage source inverter which is converting this dc to ac which is required for the induction motor now what are the benefits of vector control or field oriented control you can get fast dynamic response during the uh, induction machine drive operation and lower energy consumption higher efficiency and lower operating costs now let us begin the vector control method analysis before we go in deep into the vector control let us review a fundamental concept or let us uh, think about a perspective to see view the rotor flux and stator flux you can see here when a three phase winding is placed around the stator and the three phase balance supply is given to the windings which are placed on the stator a rotating magnetic field is developed and this rotating magnetic field is rotating at a speed which is known as synchronous speed which is depending on the frequency of supply 120 f by p okay and you know the induction motor principle and the rotor has started rotating at a speed say n okay so what about the speed of the rotating magnetic field which is produced by the rotor we have to think about that so this rotor is rotating at n rpm and the stator magnetic field is rotating at ns rpm what about nr this nr is the speed of rotation of the rotor magnetic field okay so what is the frequency of the current that is induced in the rotor this is the rotor we have taken this rotor here okay what is the speed of uh, what is the frequency of the rotor current it is slip times the frequency of the supply which means this nr will be rotating at slip frequency with respect to the rotor so if you view this rotation of the rotor magnetic field from the stator with respect to the stator what will be the speed it will be nr plus n what is the speed this speed nr is s times ns plus n all right what is this s times ns plus ns 
minus s times m s. so you get it as m s isn't it this the speed of the rotor is m s minus slip speed which means if you observe this particular rotor magnetic field phi r from the stator with respect to the stator this is also rotating at synchronous speed i hope you understood this so you can say that the stator magnetic field is rotating at omega s the rotor magnetic field is also rotating at the same speed omega s okay with respect to the stator now let us go through the coordinate transform we require this coordinate transform because we want to resolve the stator current into two components which are orthogonal in nature just like the ia and if of the uh, dc machine you want two components for the stator current which you want to control and we call it as id s ISD and ISQ the direct axis component and quadrature axis component which can independently control the flux and torque of the induction machine just like a DC machine that is our aim so for this obviously you will need coordinate transformation you have the current space phasor in your hand isn't it the current the stator current you can measure using sensors so these measured stator currents can be transformed into space vector and these current space phasor you can resolve into two orthogonal components and for that you will require the knowledge of coordinate transform you have already gone through clark transformation and park transformation we are going to repeat the same and give a physical concept of how this transformation is working on a three phase induction machine in practice so let us go through that so these coordinate transforms will transform the uh, time varying and speed varying component into time invariant values of torque and flux which can be directly determined and controlled with classic pi control see this is a closed loop control system and there will be pi controllers to control the torque and flux and we can get the desired performance of the induction machine this process starts out by measuring the three phase motor currents in practice the advantage of the constraint that in a three phase system the instantaneous sum of three current values will be zero ia plus ib plus ic equal to zero so by measuring only any two of these currents we can know the third component if we assume that it is a balanced three phase system so this will reduce the cost of the hardware because only two current sensors are required now now the clark transformation transforms uh, this three axis component three phase component into two two dimensional coordinate system and this is referred referred with respect to the stator of the motor we know that these are still sinusoidal quantities we have simply transformed this three phase into i alpha i beta which is a two phase system but we saw when we discussed clark transformation these signals are still sinusoidal we have just represented a three phase machine by a two phase machine stator which produces the same flux as the flux space phasor as the three phase machine so this is the transformation we have replaced uh, uh, ic ic with uh, ia the term ia and we have will get an expression for i alpha and i beta like this in the clark transformation matrix which we discussed before in the previous lecture now what does park transformation do the park transformation is transforming this alpha from alpha beta domain to the dq domain where we are transforming from stator reference frame or stationary reference frame to rotating reference frame which means we are trans uh, transforming from stator to 
rotor or we are orienting along the rotor flux okay so the stator is stationary reference frame we are transforming from this to rotating reference frame and the currents are transformed into dc quantities id and iq and this reference frame is itself is rotating so what is theta theta is omega s into t theta is the position of the d axis at any instant t and you get it as omega s into t what is omega s omega s is the synchronous speed of the machine and the d axis dq reference frame is rotating at this speed omega s we'll see why this id is oriented and we say that it is the flux producing component and why iq is the torque producing component by analyzing the equivalent two phase machine models so we are familiar with this transformation we have already discussed this these expressions but we'll get into the details of the machine flux creation and flux rotation process in detail so the flux vector and torque vector of an equivalent two phase motor now we are going to represent the machine as a two phase motor here so at the instant i alpha is equal to i alpha maximum i beta equal to 0 okay since these are orthogonal so this is producing a flux phi in this direction i alpha is producing a flux phi in this direction now we are replacing the coils alpha and beta with two fictitious coils d and q that is a transformation from alpha beta to dq domain okay how we have fixed a coil d and coil q and a current id which is same as i alpha maximum what was the peak value of i alpha maximum that particular value of current is passed through is this d axis coil so this will result in a flux phi r like this okay now what is the current through this coil through the q it is zero so this component which is producing the flux phi r is known as a flux creating component of the stator current the stator we have replaced with the alpha beta coil and now we have replaced the alpha beta coil with a fictitious coil d and q now it is stationary it is not rotating we will see that d and q are stationary now now we after setting up this flux phi r by this current id we send a dc current iq through this particular coil q okay the result is that the coil q creates a flux phi q so how will the flux be created in the transition from zero to nominal value it will result in induced voltages and currents in the rotor so q will create a flux the coil q will create a flux and that d phi by dt which is d phi q by dt will cause an emf to be induced in the rotor conductors the direction of these currents is as shown in this figure the result is that these induced currents together with the flux form a torque now this is like a current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field which was already set up isn't it this phi r was already there and the change in iq the transient change in iq has caused the transient change in this flux phi q and that is inducing an emf in these conductors in the rotor and it is causing a current through these conductors 
Now this rotor is behaving like a current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field phi r, and that will produce a the the develop a force. This force, what is this force? You know it is Lorentz force, and these together will form a torque, which will rotate this rotor. Now this I D is a flux creating component, and I Q has created the torque, and therefore it is the torque creating component so what is happening it ha in the, during the transient state of phi q we saw the uh, operation of a current carrying conductor on a flux phi r the current in the rotor conductors is the result of changing iq we therefore refer iq as a torque creating component we discussed that now how will you ensure continuous motor rotation here we saw that during the transient an emf was induced so once the transient phenomenon of phi q is over that is once this change in iq is over these are still stationary d and q coils are stationary so once the change in iq is over the transient is over which means the emf induction in the rotor will stop and therefore torque also will disappear but we want, what we want we want this uh, dq coil to produce the same torque as it was produced using the three phase rotating magnetic field so to maintain this torque what is done we rotate the coil q around the rotor with a speed ms this constant rotating flux phi q is experienced by the rotor conductors as a changing flux if we rotate the coil q the currents will continue to be induced in the rotor conductors let us along with that we rotate the coil d why should we rotate the coil d because this phi r and phi q should rotate together okay then only the uh, machine will operate like a equivalent to a three phase induction machine okay so the rotor is pulled along in the same manner as in the three phase motor so uh, we can see that then phi r and phi uh, the phi r which was already set up and phi q which was set up by the q axis coil if they rotate together that is if these coils are rotated together we can simulate the three phase induction motor operation using these two coils so phi q and phi r together produce the same torque as the three phase induction motor if they are rotated together then uh, the rotor rotates with a speed n rpm which is not much slower than the coils d and q if the rotor has the same speed as d and q what will happen the induction currents would naturally cease and that is the same principle that there won't be any relative velocity and there won't be a torque which is developed in this machine also so the dq is rotated d and q coils are rotated at the same speed omega s as the synchronous speed of the supply and that is how a torque continuous torque continuous torque continuous torque rotation will cause the torque to be developed so what we have done here is we have simulated the same machine using a two phase rotating stator coils these are the rotating coils d and q with constant current through these coils and they produce the same effect as the three phase induction motor or they produce the same effect as the two phase induction motor with alpha beta coils okay so this transformation that is this is clark transformation transformation from three phase to two phase in alpha beta and this is d alpha beta to dq transformation that is two phase rotating stator coils okay now we have this id and iq which are the stator currents and these are producing id is producing phi r the flux producing component of the stator current and iq is the torque producing component because the torque producing component is this phi q and these are equivalent to equivalent to your if and ia in dc machines okay 
So the torque of an equivalent two phase motor is given by the product of flux pi r with the current in the rotor conductors. This current is proportional with the flux phi q and therefore the current i q. Or you can see the expression here. The this this is how we can conclude the dq transformation of the induction motor stator current. The induction motor stator current we have now resolved into i d and i q. The stator current we have resolved as i d and i q which are dc now. This is not alpha beta. This is dq. And by controlling this i q we can control the torque of the machine and by controlling id we can control phi r so you get this expression which is similar to this mem is electromagnetic torque te itself here you see this is the expression for dc machine we saw k this phi is proportional to if now by controlling the current iq we are able to control the torque and by controlling the current id we are able to control this flux phi r the flux creating and torque creating components of the fictive, fictitious coils D and Q are in reality obtained from two variable sinusoidal currents I alpha and I beta in the real coils of our two phase machine. So I alpha and I beta are the are real coils. That is we have replaced three phase coils by two phase alpha beta coils. This can actually be physically, you can make a machine like this. You can actually make a three phase machine as well as a two phase machine in uh, reality but the dq is something which you cannot create in reality these are fictitious these are just not you are analyzing we are uh, what do you say you are imagining two coils which are taking dc currents and we are we are we have converted from alpha beta up to that imaginary domain which is rotating at the same speed as the singleness speed of the machine, the supply wave of the rotating magnetic field. Now these coils are fixed on the stator. So this alpha beta are in reality and this is the alpha axis and this is the beta axis. Okay. So this is the picture which I gave when we studied three phase to two phase. We have alpha coil here and beta coil here. From this now we have moved to dq domain. Okay. Now a rotating field in the stator has an angular velocity omega s. As with the three phase motor the rotor is pulled along with a speed n which is less than n s. The rotor speed is less than the uh, synchronous speed. Now the rotor has a rotor flux phi r which also rotates at omega's radians per second. We discussed that. The rotor flux also rotates at the synchronous speed similar to the three phase motor. If we now allow the fictitious coils d and q and therefore the dq coordinate system to rotate with the rotor flux phi r we can get the following figure. Now, this is this figure showing this is showing the alpha coil beta coil and this is the alpha axis and this is the beta axis. Now at some time instant t we are observing the direction of the position of the flux phi r. It is making an angle theta with respect to this position. This position is t equal to zero position. At this position both d and q axis are along the alpha and beta axis. But what is happening to this d and q axis? It is rotating at a speed omega s, which means at a position theta, it would have gone, th gone through an angle equal to omega s into t after time t. So that general uh, representation is shown here. So dq is rotating with respect to the alpha beta reference frame. Alpha beta reference frame is stationary reference frame and dq reference frame is rotating. Now if you resolve the stator current like uh, here you can see you have i alpha and i beta here and along the d axis we have i d alpha and here we have i q beta and this is i q alpha and this is i d beta and we have saw the transformation equations from three phase to 
two phase. Now we will see inverse path and inverse Clark expressions. These are just inverse matrix which transforms this VDQ to alpha beta domain and from alpha beta to ABC or three phase domain. You can analyze these uh, matrices or expressions for yourself uh, from the uh, and, uh, these phasor space phasor diagrams. Now we are moving into the block diagram of field oriented control or vector control. So what are we going to do with these transformed space vectors? You can see here the stator currents are sensed IA, IB. If you know IA, IB, IA plus IB plus IC equal to 0, you can find out IC. So from ABC domain, you can transform it into alpha beta domain using Clark transformation. So you get IS alpha and IS beta. Then we are transforming from IS alpha beta to ISD and ISQ using path transformation. But path transformation will require an additional information which is the value of theta. We will see how theta value is computed but not in detail because it is beyond the scope of our syllabus. Now this I will just conclude this uh, block diagram explanations. So this ISD and ISQ are compared with the ISD reference value and ISQ reference value and using a PI controller we are going to generate the VSQ reference and VSD reference which are give, given to the space vector modulation block but after transforming it into Vs alpha and Vs beta reference using inverse path transformation this will also require the value of theta so from DQ domain it is transformed to alpha beta domain now this is the space vector Is which is the reference to sorry Vs which is the reference to the space vector modulation block and the VA, VB, VC uh, voltages are applied from the inverter. This, um, these references are given to the inverter. Control PWM signals are given to the inverter. And from the DC you are getting the respective uh, three phase voltages which are applied to the AC motor. Next we will see how we get the angle theta and these reference values ISD ref and ISQ ref. To determine these imaginary currents mathematically, we should know the amplitude and location of the rotor flux at every instant. So the rotor flux can be estimated, the position of the rotor flux. We saw theta is the angle or position of the rotor flux. This can be calculated from by direct calculation from voltage and current measurements on the stator side. In addition, a number of motor parameters will be required. Okay. There is also indirect calculation from the slip of the machine. From the slip measurement, uh, uh, for this slip measurement is required, which we will use an encoder or taco generator on the motor shaft. And the rotor time constant also has to be known. What is rotor time constant? It is depending on the inductance of the rotor and the resistance of the rotor. But we are not going into the details of these. I am just showing the block diagram of direct calculation of flux. This is using the data of the motor. What is the value of LR, LS, or index, stator inductance, rotor inductance, rotor reactance, rotor uh, uh, stator, rotor resistance, stator resistance, etc. Sorry, RS, etc. And we are modeling the induction machine, and that is this block. Okay, and from the induction machine model, the references for the theta will be uh, found out. That is the position of the rotor flux and the value of phi r. The rotor flux magnitude will also be found out using the model of the mathematical model of the induction machine. A detailed uh, discussion on the mathematical model is beyond the scope of our syllabus. So just understand that using the direct calculation of flux. This is, I have just shown the direct calculation method here. We are computing theta and phi r. So this theta and uh, phi r which is computed is used somewhere else. Theta is used for the transformation or for the path transformation. And you can see phi r is used to 
in the comparison here the flux reference is given here and torque reference is given here so you are independently controlling the torque and flux here so these references are given here and flux which is the rotor flux is measured and phi r reference is compared with the uh, measured flux and the control block pi controller will produce the d axis current reference and the uh, torque com control uh, block that is torque comparison and the pi controller will produce the isq reference so these are given as the references here in the block diagram of the vector control isq reference and isd reference isq reference represents the uh, torque component and isd reference represents the flux reference component and there was an outer loop which compared the flux which was which was estimated from the induction machine and theta is also estimated from the induction machine and you are implementing the whole vector control concept here so what are the steps one by one the three phase theta currents are measured this measurement provides ia ib and ic the rotor velocity is also measured so that depends on direct whether it is direct control or indirect the three phase currents are converted to a two axis system this conversion provides the variables is alpha and is beta in alpha beta domain the two axis coordinate system is rotated to align with the rotor flux using a transformation angle theta where theta is the displacement angle of the rotor flux at instant t with respect to the stator reference axis which is the alpha axis so the two axis coordinate system which is a rotating system is generated here that is isd and isq variables are obtained from is alpha and is beta isd and isq are quadrature currents transformed to the rotating coordinate system for steady state conditions isd and isq will be constant these are dc quantities we have transformed the rotate uh, the stationary reference frame or stationary coordinate system to rotating coordinate system which is rotating at synchronous speed and it is aligned at an angle theta which is varying with respect to time error signals are formed using isd isq and reference values for each what are the reference values isd reference and isq reference these are the reference values which are generated from the torque control and uh, sorry this torque control and flux control block the isd reference controls rotor magnetizing flux and isq reference controls the torque output of the motor the error signals are input to the pi controllers the output of the controllers provide vsd ref and vsq ref which is a voltage vector vector that will be sent to the motor how is this vsd ref and vsq ref processed the vsd ref and vsq ref output values from the pi controllers are converted back to stationary reference frame using inverse path transformation this will provide vs alpha ref and vs beta ref so from the step number 8 you have got vs alpha ref and vs beta ref and these are given as reference to the svpwm inverter and the inverse output voltages thus obtained are applied to the induction motor so to conclude what is done here we are taking the current we are sensing the stator currents or the three phase stator currents converting them to alpha beta domain and along with that we are computing theta the rotor flux position with respect to the stator axis or alpha axis and we are transforming it into dq domain and in the dq domain we are comparing with the reference so the reference signals are independently controlled so isd ref and isq ref will control the torque and flux of the machine this will control the flux and this will control the torque of the machine independently just like the uh, dc machine we have seen how you represent a three phase machine using 
two phase alpha beta coils this is uh, a you have a b c coils here and again you saw how we transformed it into d q coils which are rotating coils with dc currents these are stationary coils with ac currents in them these are rotating coils with dc currents okay and using the references we are controlling the induction machine operation by producing which references the voltage references in dq domain that is vsd reference and vsq reference so why have we transformed to dq for the orthogonal for the decoupled control of the stator currents but to apply the voltage to the induction motor from dq you have to transform to again to alpha beta and this alpha beta if we get it we can easily implement sv pw uh, of the inverter and give the voltages apply voltages to the induction machine va vb and vc to the induction machine so with this i conclude the vector control of induction machine thank you for listening